chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. We have with us our old friend Richard. Richard's back to talk to us about Nibiru. Hey, Dr. Paul. Hey. Yeah, Nibiru. This is going to be an interesting one. This is this is the big one that can cause the end of the world. Yeah. Does it does that have any credibility, do you think? Well, this story's taken a bashing. I mean, it's been around for years and we're supposed to have had Nibiru hit us in 2012, 2013, 2014. Uh, I think we had we had another Nibiru for September just gone uh, this year, and we've got yet another Nibiru encounter March next year. So it's it's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Well, yeah. Is it a little bit slow coming in? Is it slowing down, or what's the story with the uh, with its arrival? Well, this is the problem you see because everybody's speculating on this thing and the amount of evidence that's actually turning up on the internet is, is not looking so credible, you know. Um, and it's it's interesting to do a story about Nibiru because um, a lot of people just go ahead and say, to the end of the world, we're going to get hit by this huge heavenly body that's going to come in. It's going to tear off the surface of the earth. It's going to cause untold destruction. We're going to have meteorite showers. It's the proper end times prophecy. So this is this is the this is the end of the world, or rather the end of an era, because this will this will change everything if, if this thing turns up. So I thought we'd I thought we'd look at a little bit of the story behind it, and uh, we'll see if we can find any credibility. How's that sound? That sounds great, Richard. In the past 30 years, speculation's grown amongst astronomers about the existence of an extra planet in our solar system. Uh, astronomers and New Age writers have thought different names. Astronomers called it Planet X for the 10th planet, or Unknown Body. Uh, New Age writers called it Nibiru, Wormwood, the Destroyer. Now, Nibiru comes from the New Age mythology and is the name for the abode of the main god Anu. Zachariah Sitchin interpreted the story of Nibiru as ancient fact in his 1976 book The Twelfth Planet and related it to translations of the ancient Sumerian writing. 
The most popular description is that Nibiru would be one of the planets circling a brown dwarf sun called Nemesis, which is part of our binary solar system and is the ancient home of the Anunnaki, Earth's fallen angels. NASA haven't ruled out that our solar system is actually binary and having a twin sun that could be less than a light year away. They do say 80% of the solar systems are binary and have twin suns, so it wouldn't be strange if we had one. The sun's described as a brown dwarf by Nibiru writers. It doesn't emit much light. It's very hard to see and can only be spotted at a distance with a high power infrared telescope like IRAS. Accounts of Nibiru vary from smaller than the Earth to seven times the size. Its orbit also varies depending on who you talk to from 3,600 years to 250 years. The details are all over the place. Disinformation is everywhere. We've got false pictures, fake sightings, possible complete government cover-ups. Now, after Neptune was discovered, astronomers speculated there might still be another planet out there. Percival Lowell proposed the planet X hypothesis back in 1915 to explain the observed irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. At first, astronomers thought they'd found planet X when Pluto was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh, but they realized that Pluto is too small to explain the observed orbital perturbations of Uranus and Neptune. So something's pulling on those two planets. And this all started a new search for planet X. Let's meet the guy who actually came up with the first set of interesting calculations for it. Uh, this is um, Dr. Bob Harrington. And uh, Dr. Harrington um, was actually the chief astronomer for the US Naval Observatory. We're talking about the American military here, and they're spending money on this stuff. Now, this becomes a bit of an odd story um, because uh, Dr. Robert Harrington, he went down there with an 8-inch telescope and he was, he was uh, making some observations because he thought that he'd found Planet X. Now, the reason he thought he'd found it were, was because um, the orbits of some of our planets were being messed around with. So we've got Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, uh, and they call it um, its perturbation of the orbits. So in other words, there's some large other planet. This is how they found all the planets originally. They, they found the orbits were being messed around with, and they went looking for an object that was messing with the planetary orbits so they went looking for um, another body and dr harrington noticed that we've got a bit of a problem with these other three planets it's an amazing story to begin with yeah yeah absolutely but wouldn't you know it um when he's completing his observations and he sent them off to nasa he, he took a load of films he made uh he made some um, celestial maps. He plotted the orbit of um, Planet X. He said he'd found it. And all those films went off to NASA and were mysteriously never seen again. Does this pistol uh, fire the dart? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman. And a special one was developed, which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. The, the poison was frozen into some sort of dart, and then it was shot at uh, very high speed into the person. So at, when it reached the person, it would melt inside them, and the only thing would be like one little tiny red dot on their body, which was hard to detect. There wouldn't be a needle left or anything like that in the person. But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes, so that uh, there was no, no way of perceiving that the, uh, the target was him. Wow, we're really good at killing people, aren't we? We can give somebody a heart attack with a gun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is scumbaggery at its best. Scumbaggery is right. We've got some of these notes, actually, that we can we can put on the website for people to have a look at. Because uh, I, I got all the original Dr. Harrington notes, or um, a report anyway, uh, which talks about what he found. Now, um, so he disappears mysteriously, and um, then the trail sort of goes a little bit quiet. Now, I don't know if you've seen these on the internet before. Pictures. No, I've never seen that, seen that. Yeah, pictures of two suns. Very weird, isn't it? 
Very weird. Yeah, and they've had these. Um, they've had these in mainstream media, believe it or not. Not in. Not so much in the United States. This has been uh, China and Russia have gone with these stories, uh, talking about two suns in the sky. People are taking clear pictures of it, and it's uh, it's all very real indicators that Nibiru is coming in to trash everything, and it's nearly here. Now. Yeah, this is this is where the problems start because I looked at this evidence and um, to be fair, I'm going to debunk it. Okay, and uh, just to just to make it even more debunkable, I went outside into my garden and I got a camera and I pointed it at the sun. And okay, it's a camera phone, but um, here's the effect I get. So look at that. Can you see the extra sun? Right. Lens flare. That's exactly what a lens flare looks like. So, unfortunately for us, that's a really good lens flare. Yeah, it's, it's an impressive lens flare. One of the debunkers came out and he did this with the moon. You can actually get two moons. If you, if you point the right lens at the moon, uh, you get a, a lens flare off the moon, which anyone would say, there are two moons. Oh, no, there's a moon coming to kill us all tomorrow. Oh, no, end of the world. Ah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it all goes downhill. Uh, this one was taken by NASA satellite IRIS. The image is dated 21st of October 2003 and clearly shows us an image of what we think Nibiru looks like. It's the winged disc. Now, the story was about a NASA cover-up to withhold this image from the public, but when you look deeper into the image to see if it's a fake, I read the writing on the right hand side. Now, IRIS is a solar observatory and it was launched on June 27th, 2013. 2013? That's 10 years later than the date in the picture. And IRIS only looks at our sun. Um, it's actually called the Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph, or IRIS for short, and it observes the low level of the sun's atmosphere, which is a constantly moving area called the Interface Region, uh, and it does it in better detail than we've ever had before, and it takes some pictures like this. Now, if you look at the code on it, which is 2003UB313, that's the code given to dwarf planet Eris, which was discovered in January 2005. So this picture is showing us something which wasn't even discovered until two years later, and it was discovered by Palomar Observatory, which was uh, a team led by Mike Brown. Uh, they discovered it's a trans-Neptunian object. It's 27% bigger than Pluto. It's 0.27 the mass of Earth. Its distance from the sun is 96.4 AU, or astronomical units, which is three times the distance that Pluto's away. So this thing's really far away. We're only only one AU from the sun and you could call this planet X uh, because um, Pluto's called a planet well a dwarf planet um, so if, if we're going to demote Pluto and we demote this one it's not really planet X but it's so far away uh, the best picture we have of Eris is taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and it looks like this so I think we can close the book on our first picture. This is a fake. It's probably photoshopped by somebody trying to scare the alternative media community. Now, this is the Google box. Now, a lot of people have said that the image behind there is actually of Nibiru and Google are censoring it. Have you heard of this? Yes, I have. Now, I happen to have a copy of the image they say is behind this black box and being censored. Look at this. That's a creepy looking image, isn't it? That's the creepiest looking planet. I mean, it's scary looking. If you look at everything else out there, looks like, you know, calm, just another day at the office. But that thing is menacing looking. Yeah, isn't it? <clears throat> It's got like, yeah, yeah the, and you see the bits coming off the edge of it. Uh, this is what a lot of people are saying is the uh, the dust trail coming off it, which is the, the iron-based dust trail. So this is like iron oxide. Um, and this is uh, this is one of the effects they've said of the iron oxide is when it, when it comes swishing by our planet and we get a dose of this iron oxide trail off it, um, it's going to turn the rivers and the waters to blood. So it will make all the water go red. It all sounds pretty terrible, but let's take a look, shall we? Here are the coordinates for the black box, so you can put these in to Google Sky and go there yourself and have a look at it. Now, 
if you put these new coordinates in, you'll actually find that the image we were just talking about wasn't hidden behind the black box in the first place. Google never censored it. Now I found out the imagery came from STSCI digitized sky survey. So I went there and I pulled the original plates. Uh, these were made by POSS2, which was a satellite. Now, decades before they'd taken the same piece of sky with POSS1, which we're looking at now. If we set these two up and we do a comparison between POSS2 and POSS1, we can see if anything's moving. Now, as you'll notice, Nibiru isn't going anywhere, or I would be Nibiru, because this isn't. So how about we take a quick trip back and we're gonna look at STSCI again. Now, let's fill in the black box. So this is the data that was missing from the black box in the first place. Uh, some people would tell you that there's nothing going on here, but who am I to believe anybody? It's best to look for yourself. So I pulled the two images and I got them together. So I've got the POSS2 imagery, which is slightly clearer, and POSS1, which is the blurrier older data. Now in the PSS, POSS2, you should find that we can see more because the equipment's better. So if we look at these two images overlaid onto each other, then I invert them We've got a problem. Now I noticed that we've got 12 stars missing and we've got one major star moving up and down in that image. So you can see over a few decades, we do have a little bit of movement. So it's not quite true when people say there's nothing happening here. However, I've got no idea exactly where those stars have gone. They're just missing, which means they've moved quite some distance in a few decades. I'll have to come back to you on that one and we'll give you an update in a future episode. Have you heard about uh, the tunnels that people have been um, have been digging? Yes. There's a map. Look at that one. Oh, this is this They're is all over. yeah. This is everywhere. Look at it. And it's all over the world. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's there's a lot of underground bases now everywhere, aren't there? Yes, there are. Now, if you've known about something for I don't know, let's let's give this forty years. Something that's going to happen and it's going to affect the surface of the planet, but you have no idea where it's going to land. I mean, some people have probably dialed it in a bit better than us because I mean we're <laughs> we're we're shooting in the dark here a little bit. So the only way we can really get any good information is by following the people who've definitely got better information than us, and that's got to be expensive, hasn't it? Digging tunnels like that. Right, and they usually don't do it on behalf of the public over here. Although I have heard that in Russia and China, they are doing these massive building projects so that people can be evacuated into them. Mm. Have, you, have you seen but not, <laughs> yeah, not in the West. Not in the West. Not so much They're for secret. Us. No, no, absolutely. No. Um, the, uh, the Swiss have all got bunkers underneath the houses, though. They're always all right. They're always ready, aren't they? Mm. The Russians have got the Russians have got underground bases to stash people, haven't they? They've got for the for the public that is. That's right. That's right. And China supposedly have massive uh, subway systems, not so that people can be taken. Well, not just that. They've got massive cities with nobody in them. That's right. You remember that? They they said, well, it's because of China's economics that they had to carry on building, even if they're building enormous cities with nobody in. I mean, that wouldn't that wouldn't make an awful lot of sense, would it? Just to build an enormous city it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. No, but rush it along. I mean, you don't want to wait around too much because, you know, if when people spot that, there's going to be a riot. <laughs> we know that much. That's right. Right. Yeah, this is that. This is a problem, you see, because I mean, you're either you're either going to be talking about seeing something like that, which is gonna is going to scare people enough to cause massive trouble, but it's certainly going to scare the elite into going into a bunker, isn't it? That's right. Uh, do you remember the stories um, of all the FEMA trains? Right, FEMA trains to the camps with restraining devices, supposedly. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you don't know exactly what's going to be what's going to be going through people's heads because, uh, you know, all the end times prophecies. Right. Yeah, people are. I mean, don't you think that's going to be right up in people's heads when they say that's what's coming through and we are in the end times. And by the way, we've got a load of diseases coming and then they start reading from the Bible and people start getting a little bit worried because... <laughs> 
Yes. It doesn't say good things, does it, in the Bible when it comes to the end times? No, you have to go through a lot of bad things, but it is a birthing. Supposedly, at the end, it turns out all right. Well, <clears throat> relatively speaking, <laughs> you've well, got, yeah, I mean, you you got to go through Armageddon and stuff like that. I mean, right, you, know, you have to go through the tribulation, exactly. Yeah, which, I mean, the thing is, when this happens, um, there's going to be more to come. So if people are reading from the Bible, then there's the bad news that um, when this thing comes by, it's going to come by again. So this is where it gets uh, really annoying. Um, it's supposed to come back in five months and do it again. Uh, we, have, we, have a, we have an object that's got a 350 year or so orbit, but this particular time, it's going to just swing back unless we hit a tail or unless unless there's something following it oh yeah this is this is like a comet tail you know those you know those wing bits coming off the side of it those are millions of miles long oh boy <laughs> it's going to be like someone's macing the planet <laughs> so it's it's going to wow. there's russian troops in the states part of the un soldiers i know well i that, know they've got at least 20,000 russian troops yeah that's amazing Mm. And you you know, if you were going to have a third world war with Russia, you wouldn't have tens of thousands of their troops marching around now, would you? No, you wouldn't. You just and wouldn't, would you? So all this hype that we're, we're, we're defending ISIS and they're bombing the shit out of ISIS in uh, Syria, mm. that's all just theater. I think what was trying to be done in the Middle East is they're trying to work up to third world war because I think I think they want a third world war, definitely. Because, I mean, if we're talking about the banksters here, they finance both sides and war just pays so well. I mean, it's great for them. It's, it's, really, right. it's really good for business. And look at the military industrial complex. They get to sell loads of weapons. And times aren't good at the moment. I mean, if people said that the economy is recovering in the States, I mean, how many other people would say that's just a massive lie? I mean, it, it's not looking right. great. You know, it's the stock market's right. been blown up again by the banksters, so it looks good on paper, but there's there's not really a lot of stuff going on there. And how many millions of Americans are on food stamps now? Oh, yeah, there's no jobs in the United States. Service in the industry is the only thing that happens there. Yeah. Uh, tough right. times. Yeah, well, exactly. This is This is our biggest problem. Um, so we, we've got all this going on and got all the climate change, of course, because, uh, you know, they, they were very quick, weren't they, to say climate change is our fault. Well, right. wouldn't it make you feel a little bit strange if I said that climate change isn't just on Earth? It's happening through the whole solar system. Yeah, some people say that. This is the um, this is a chart going through um, solar activity. And uh, do you remember we were talking about 12,000 BC when we had uh, we had our little blip with the uh, with the sun and the flood? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, if you look at the solar activity there, they've they've um, they've done a chart. Uh, they've had to dig up like Earth cores and things to work out how much energy the sun was putting out. But they apparently put this together over um, tens of thousands of years here, and they've they've worked out that the sun is just as angry as it was about 12,000 BC which is a bit awkward because if you're if you're going to play the Nibiru card here Nibiru's got Nemesis which is its sun that it's going around which is creeping into our solar system and what's going to get you more heat second sun's probably going to help isn't it right yeah and look so, at that so if that was related to the original flood like I was saying when it whacked Tiamat or if it came through and knocked out Ceres and created the asteroid belt don't know but either way if, if something big turned up that's looking similar to the last time something really bad happened isn't it yeah so so this Nibiru has his its son following it effectively yeah because um what NASA will tell you is that um, most um, solar systems are actually not singular solar systems, they're binary, which means that you've got a sun and then another sun. So there's two suns, uh, and effectively, they, they would be known as there'd be two solar systems, but effectively going round each other kind of thing, you know? So they interact with each other, and they're binary solar systems. And they say 80% of solar systems are like that. What do you say? Actually, eighty percent is definitely going towards. We could well be, couldn't we? Right. Some people say we have a dark sun. 
Mm. We have a light sun and then we have a dark sun just to be consistent with that model. If we've got um, a sun coming in that's got Nibiru going around it, um, it's coming into the solar system and this thing's like a heater. Now, look at what's happened to Venus. See the picture? Right. From 1978, right, where that map of the, the tunnels was coming from in the 70s, look at that, to 1999, we've, we've, got, we've got a couple of decades here and a two and a half thousand percent increase in green light coming off Venus. That's a lot of light, isn't it, coming off it? That's enormous. Right. And then look, rapid appearance of clouds on Mars. <laughs> you know, this, this stuff is weird, isn't it? Yeah. And ozone appearing on Mars. I mean, right. again, with, I mean, I'm sort of averaging it out here, but we've got a couple of decades here. And then look, 50% erosion of ice features. So Mars well, has got global well, yeah, warming. But but before that, the, the photograph before that was from NASA. Now, NASA has got, uh, isn't just a, an innocent research facility. It's, it's got, uh, it's got to follow up or make way for the, for the normal narrative of the global warming thing. Well, so it could be yeah. concocting all of these things because it's not like NASA doesn't do that. That's what it does for a living. Well, it no, concocts in, fiction. Yeah, but why would it say there's global warming on Venus? You know, they're gonna they're gonna tax you for Venus's global warming. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They couldn't. That they screws couldn't, it, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, because right, you it, you're responsible for global warming. It's your fault. It couldn't. Uh, you're exactly right. It couldn't be uh, taxed. Yeah, but get this though. You see, um, I mean, I've got a telescope that will take these pictures what you're looking at there i can i can take that and you can't hide it i mean if if you're if you're going on about jupiter and what's going on with uh jupiter's uh white ovals um look at them changing i mean J jupiter's got remember that the great big spot on jupiter there's there's a lot of a lot of really weird stuff going on saying jupiter has gone up um 18 degrees in 10 years I mean, what would what would happen if that happened to us on Earth? Eighteen degrees in ten years, that would be a problem. Yeah. I mean, that would that would be the end, wouldn't it? Pretty much. And uh, I mean, look at this: towering storms more than a hundred kilometers high, <laughs> hundred kilometer high storms going through Jupiter's cloud deck for the first time. I mean, that's that's pretty severe. I mean. <laughs> You know, that's that's right. Not, it's not good to see that happening. And then look at this. This is this is the cue ball. So we've got Uranus here. Now, can you spot any distinctive features on that? Nothing looks like a cue ball. That is a cue ball picture. OK, now that's 1986. Now, look what happens to it. And then look, it gets hit by huge storms. And you can see, I mean, these are these are enormous things. Um, and this is all. This is happening all over the place. I mean, the point they're trying to make is they've enhanced the color a little bit on that. They're not really giant red nuclear storms. You know, they've just sort of brought it up a bit so you can see them. But look, a really big changes. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely right. Um, so that that's a bit of a problem. Look at that from 1996 to 2002. It's, it's 40% brighter. That's not yeah, that many I mean, years now, is it? No, it isn't. It's almost as if that thing's closer to what's coming in and they're getting a lot of changes because they're nearer to it than we are. Right. You see what I mean? Because they're, they're much further out than we are in the, in the system. So if there is something that's out on the edge or it's coming by and it's nearer to them, it, it's doing some pretty horrible things to them because if we've got another sun, here we go, look, 89 to 2002. Look at that, it's just it's gone swirly. <laughs> that's a scientific right. de definition right, it's swirly yeah, it is. Um, so we've got more volcanoes going off we're going to have um, there we go economic losses so <laughs> I suppose someone could dig out the insurance files couldn't they and find out how many people have, have lost due to uh, natural disaster or whatever we've got horrible things happening all around the world but I don't believe there's anything you can do to prepare for it I don't think any normal person could really do very much I mean, what are you going to do? Oh, we're not going to do a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's fair, isn't it? <laughs> no, we're not going to do a thing. Um, actually, compared with some other scenarios that could be playing out here, 
this doesn't sound like it's that bad. And when you think about World War, nuclear destruction, when you talk about uh, the, the different invasion scenarios that they could be pulling off, uh, total economic collapse, this sounds like, uh, oh, yeah, okay. This is just another one. Yeah. Well, do you know what? If, if, you, if you put it into the Bible, this thing's going to turn up. You'll love this. Remember your alien messiah? Right. Well, um, I'm not sure uh, if you've if you've looked into this angle, which is which is definitely going to make your head spin. Um, this is an ET spaceship, which is the New Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they they worked it out because um, you know the origin of man is is a little bit fishy, you know. And if you if you talk to um, a geneticist um a guy who well who's willing to talk off record um he'll he'll tell you that if you want to say well man evolved from a monkey didn't it you know that's the that's the official story right it's the official storyline that's right well if we evolved from monkeys why are they still monkeys because surely they would have all evolved right right nobody's evolving into anything i've noticed <laughs> well, if we did, we no. Uh, in fact, we're more stupid than we were before. I mean, we've got no oh, idea how we built sure. the pyramids. Yeah, if anything, we're devolving. <laughs> that's right. So, well, the good news for you, by the way, is um, you're going to have a nice ET spaceship come and get you. So, um, we're going to have the New Jerusalem, which is going to show up. Uh, notice the diameter where um, they said um, uh, my Bible knowledge is not great, but I think they were saying in the Bible that it was 1,300. I'm just reading off the screen here. You can tell I'm cheating. Right. But they said it was the same um, width as it was, it was the same length and width. Okay, um, so they worked out this is one of the designs. Somebody else says that uh, the New Jerusalem could be a pyramid as well with a square base, um, but um, this one could be this could be like the snow globe kind of version of it, which would work as well. So thirteen twenty five point seven five miles across. Um, so I mean, people can look into this a little bit more, but I mean, how's how's one of those things going to show up? So is is this pushing on the rapture? You know, this is the other thing, because um, you know, the, <laughs> with all the deception and everything, alien messiah, and you've got potentially the rapture. You've got alien spaceships or a giant ship coming down. Uh, do you get on board? What are you going to do? Oh, I'm not getting on board of anything. I, so you got <laughs> they've that. got that. They've got the false rapture plan. That thing. It looks like that. That might even be on the breakaway civilization if they wanted to build something like that. If it's that big. Well, this, this thing's got, um, like, the edge of it's made of diamond. The idea from it came, came back through a structural engineer, and he said that he had a program that could work out the stress levels of materials. And then somebody just said, like, what's the hardest stuff that you could possibly um, use to make something? And, of course, like, the idea um, was set by somebody else. I think the story went, there was a girl in the room, or something, she said, well, oh, diamond's pretty hard. And look at that. Because they say it's as clear as glass. Diamonds, pretty solid stuff, and you know we can make diamonds. That's not a problem. We can do that. Uh, you'd have to be some kind of much more advanced civilization to be making uh, one thousand three hundred and twenty-five miles worth of diamond. That's <laughs> that's got to be a big project, right? Yeah. So we could have that thing landing. Now I tell you what, if you've been predicting an alien messiah, that would that would spook most people, wouldn't it? <laughs> that was. That would make them drop to their knees. Yeah, you bet it would. Yeah, that definitely yeah. would. That would be that would be a massive, massive incentive, wouldn't it, to go with the guy who's controlling that thing? They're, right. Yeah, they're probably going to have a bit of power there, you know, and they're going to sort things right. out. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing. If if <laughs> if that turned out to be Luciferian aliens, um, that's that's got to be disappointing, hasn't it, for people thinking they're going to get raptured. <laughs> Right, but we don't know. We're purely speculating. We have no idea. So <laughs> it could be, um, but this is this is just a different take on it. Uh, there was a bunch of Jewish rabbis that were meeting, um, and they were actually saying that uh, they thought they were ha they were in the time of Jacob's troubles. Uh, here we go. I don't know if you can see that, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Jacob's troubles: earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, violence. Yeah, volcanic but look, activity look at the year 
This is 2000 <laughs> onwards. Right. Yeah, this is, this is like recent. <laughs> right. We've gotten through some of it. We have. We have. And um, we've got um, World War Three potentially starting. I mean, this is, this is what some people in the military have said, haven't they? That, in fact, World War Three is going on, but it's a stealth war, isn't it? Everyone's got sneaky fighters, but is it really a world war? Are there, that, are there, are there enough nations involved to call it a world war? Right. I was listening to Alex Jones a couple of weeks ago, and he says that the Pentagon says the World War III is over and we're in World War IV. Yeah, I'm not or sure. you the Pentagon. Okay, so this says over to the right here, 2015, and then all of a sudden you have to be aware when, here comes the, bad when news. the timeline turns red. Yeah. You have to be oh. aware. Now this is this is September, so we we go into the red zone in September. Then, so this is this is what a lot of people were getting spooked by, thinking it's going to happen now. It's going to happen now. September is the time, but I mean, you can't help but have a natural reaction that when it doesn't happen in September, all of this has gone away and none of it's going to happen. Yeah, and you go, oh, right. oh, thank God, it's all gone. There there aren't really any FEMA camps or anything and all the tunnels fell in right we're all just, <laughs> it's all gone it's all gone it's, it's all just fear-mongering and we can all just uh right. go back to what we were doing yeah go back to work yeah it's all relax again that's it it's fine that's great um, yeah i mean this is the problem you see because the the, the twist that the twist that i'm going through in my mind is that um all of this is a much slower arcing timeline i mean look at the look at the years rolling by here on this I'm looking at the uh, five months, 150 days in the wilderness under his pr protection. That's right. Yeah. So this is um, this is the second coming stuff. So this is uh, so this is <clears throat> Jesus Mark two or uh, potentially Jesus right. Jesus's brother could be. Um, so Jesus might not return. It might be his brother because uh, Jesus was the first vessel. So there's been a bit of speculation on that one. Um, and it's it's going to be a whole different thing because uh, this this guy potentially is is going to be doing some damage. Uh, so this isn't pacifist Jesus. This is you know this is going to be well. Let's just call him.